Welcome to Earl Rowe Provincial Park. This park is located in Alliston, Ontario and has over 1,500 acres of park to explore. It's a tranquil setting for boating, canoeing, kayaking, and hiking through their network of trails. This weekend, we're going to be sharing our experience here and what this park has to offer. Let's go. We just arrived at Earl Rowe Provincial Park and it's a bit of a unique park for us because when we got here to go to registration, we have to go to one building, but our park entrance is actually down the street and across the road. And we get a little ticket here to actually scan to get into that park area. So this will be a little bit different for us, but we are on our way to our site now. Past expiry date. The little pass that they gave us to scan to actually open the gate here doesn't work. It says that it's past its expiry and we have a vehicle behind us so we can't actually reverse or get in. All right, we are in. We didn't actually have to wait that long at all. The warden came so quickly, let us in, and he's bringing us a new pass to our site once we get there. And now our first stop is water. Check this out though. Looks like a little bit of a DIY concoction here. That's clear tape and a second hose just attached there. Good water pressure though. Excellent. I'm gonna give you a tour here of the water filling and dumping station now since nobody else is here. Basically, it is one large loop, but you can go out on either side of the circle. So there's an exit down here to camping sites, and then if I flip all the way around, there's one back here. So this dumping station has a threaded hose, a bucket that they're using for garbage, and it's just right behind the water filling station and like other parks that don't have a bypass, you just basically get stuck behind the trailer in front of you if there's somebody filling up with water or you're waiting to get water and somebody is dumping. It is quite a large site, so if you do have a bigger trailer, it would probably fit here and there's plenty of parking as well. We arrived here pretty late today, much later than we normally like to get to a park. So instead of doing a park tour this evening and starting all of that, we're gonna wait until tomorrow morning and get up bright and early. So tonight we're gonna just chill by the fire and enjoy because it is getting a little chilly. We finished breakfast, got everything put away, and now it's time to start our park tour. When you arrive at Earl Row, there's a registration area behind me for day use and camping. They sell firewood and ice here. And if you're located in the other campground, there is a spot that you can do a tight U-turn to get back out to the main road and head over to the other campground. There are four campgrounds in the Westside campground area. Fletcher's Field is the electrical site, and then there are three non-electric campgrounds that are Trillium Woods, Meadow Brook, and Boyne Meadow. Fletcher's Field has sites 200 to 280, Boyne Meadow has sites 400 to 488, Meadowbrook has sites 800 to 841, and Trillium Woods has sites 600 to 695. We're driving through the Westside Campground right now, specifically in Fletcher's Field where they have the electrical sites, and Ontario Parks really needs to update the pictures on their website because I was led to believe that these are basically all in an open field, but there is so much greenery and actual privacy between the sites, I am completely shocked. And I wish I had booked in this side of the campground because this is where all of the amenities are. So if you're looking online and you're not sure, maybe see if there's some updated photos in one of the Facebook groups because these sites are actually pretty nice. 
Fletcher's Field has a comfort station with showers and flush toilets for men and women. And while we're here, it's about 11.30 and it does look like it's in need of a refresh, but otherwise it seems pretty okay. The second dump station can be found over in the Fletcher's Field campground area and it does have a threaded hose as well. It's also a loop here so just around the loop is the water filling area and then the rest of the loop goes to the exit. There's no bypass lane here so it's the same situation. If someone's in front of you, you're going to be waiting. I was going to give you a tour of Meadowbrook and Trillium Woods campgrounds but unfortunately they're not operational right now so you'll have to check those out on your own if you come to Earl Row in the future. Another interesting thing about Earl Row is that they have a drive through garbage and recycling center in the West Side campground. Just across from Fletcher's Field are three large parking lots and there's also this covered picnicking area that can probably be reserved through the park. Well, we aren't lost, but we also don't really know where we are at the moment. We were looking for the amphitheater and seems like it should be in this area, but we just haven't found it yet. So I'll update you if we do. While we were on the hunt to find the amphitheater, which we still haven't found by the way, we did find the Rainbow Run Trail. There were actually multiple spots where you could get on this trail in this area. So I think it's a nice trail. It seems very well groomed and fairly easy. And it does say that bicycles are permitted. We thought we found the amphitheater, but it turns out to be just some benches around a campfire. If anybody does know where to find the amphitheater, let me know in the comments below because we're going to give up on this. But for now, we're going to quit while we're behind and continue on our tour. The park store here offers a lot of different items for sale. They have ice cream that's freshly scooped. They have ice cream bars, lots of different essentials that you may need for camping and tons of merchandise. However, they didn't have the Earl Rose stickers while we were here. So I'll have to come back to get one of those in the future. Down by the park store, you can also find the day use area and a beautiful big sandy beach. However, you can't always swim here. They do post when it is safe to swim and when it's not because they test the water frequently here. And at the water's edge is where you can find the boat launch area for the canoes and kayaks. And if you do want to rent one here, it doesn't matter what watercraft you want to rent. It's $15 per hour and we think that's a pretty good deal. And just behind the beach area, there is a swing set playground area. And over here, they have flush toilets for men and women. Well, the river's just a little bit murky, kind of gross looking. So I wouldn't want to fish or go in this water at all. We made it over to the pool area after taking an unnecessarily long route to get here. However, it is not open and it doesn't look like it's going to be open for quite some time. The building looks quite run down and overgrown in this area and that pool looks like it's pretty dirty. So if it is going to be opened anytime soon, it's definitely in need of a major clean. There are restrooms over here as well. However, they are locked right now and dogs are not permitted on this beach either. And it looks like another beautiful, big sandy beach. 
We took the road all the way to the pool area and we didn't realize that there was a trail because we didn't bring a map with us. So now that we know that there is this little trail, we're gonna take it back and see if it shades us and knocks off some time from our walking. The little trail is getting two thumbs up from the Sujanos. It was too sunny for us to go canoeing, so we decided to do the next best thing. Come into town and try out a brewery. Alan got a delicious chocolate dip donut and I got an iced coffee because it is a hot day today. Look at that. Earl Row has three group campsites that accommodate 25 to 100 people each. They don't have showers here, but they do have vault toilets and there's access to taps. So if you're looking to host a group, this would be a great park. There are four campgrounds in the Riverside Campground area. Hayden Way has sites 70 to 152, and these are all electric. Salmon Run has sites 1 to 14, and these are non-electric. Rabbit Loop has sites 15 to 41, and these are non-electric. And then Blue Heron has sites 43 to 69, and these are also non-electric. We are now doing a tour of the Riverside campground area so that we can get to some of the other locations we haven't been to yet one of which is the pathway from this campground to the main campground. The Riverside Campground Trail is the trail that takes you under the bridge, by the river, to the other campground area, and we're gonna take it right now. Because the Riverside Campground is actually in a different area, they do encourage you to walk along this trail over to the main campground, but you can drive if that's what you prefer, and it's also really easy to take a bike on this path or even down the main road. We've officially made it to the west side campground area and it only took us 10 minutes. That was also with us walking at a very leisurely pace and stopping to take some photos. And now it's time for my overall thoughts of our experience. I have to admit, I didn't give this park the credit that I think it deserves. I thought that because of the beach situation that it wasn't a great park and probably not a park that we would like to camp in really. But after coming here, we have seen the campgrounds and they are actually really nice. So many great sites, so many private big pull through sites. So I have to apologize to Earl Rowe because we did end up really enjoying our visit. I'm gonna start with the things that I didn't like about this park. And obviously the first one is the fact that the water here isn't reliable for swimming. Because of the goose population here, it does get contaminated and they do test the water frequently. So sometimes you just can't go swimming. And after seeing the water, it does look like a murky green color, lots of algae in the river. So it wouldn't be somewhere I would come if I'm looking for a nice beach area. 
The second thing I didn't really like about this park was the split campground situation. We were staying in the Riverside campground, which meant that we either had to drive or walk across the path to get to the main area, which wasn't that bad to be honest, but it just was something that was a little bit weird for us. And I'm glad that we came over to the main area because if we had have only stayed in the Riverside, we would have missed out on so many things. Now for the things that I liked about this park. The park store here was great. There were tons of supplies inside, so if you forgot something, you could probably find it there. Or if you just wanted to go get a sweet treat like an ice cream or an ice cream cone, they had you covered. I also really enjoyed how many trails they had here and that you could basically get on a trail pretty much anywhere in the park. So if you do like trails, either walking or biking, there were a variety to choose from here. Another thing that I was pleasantly surprised with were the campsites. When I was looking online, the pictures did not do this place justice. We went on a tour of all of the campgrounds today with the exception of two. And the geese agree with me, the campsites are really nice. There's lots of foliage, there's lots of privacy. There are a few open sites that don't offer privacy, but you'll get that in any campground. So I would just say that the photos online do not do this place justice. And we were quite surprised and pleasantly surprised with the sites. And the final thing that I would say is that this place is located very conveniently. So if you need to hop into town, you can do that very quickly. It's about five minutes down the road. And if you want to check out a brewery, we went to Creemore, it was about 30 minutes away, but there are some that are more local and not too far from the campground. And lastly, something to just be aware of is the fact that this park has a lot of tick warnings and there's lots of tall grass around this park. So make sure you're doing your complete tick checks if you're going for a hike or just wandering around this park. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing what Earl Row Provincial Park has to offer. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future camping or travel videos.